Hola, ¿cómo están? ¿Bien o mal? ¿Mal? Ay, pues qué mal, ni modo, there's nothing I can do, no hay nada que pueda hacer. Well, I know there's something I can do, I can teach you Spanish so you get in a good mood. Te voy a enseñar español para que te pongas de buen humor. Sí que sí. Uh, en la clase de hoy, in today's class, we're going to review a topic uh, related to tenses. We're going to talk about the present tense in Spanish. How do we use the present tense? When do we use it? In what cases do we use it? The present tense um, used in, in Spanish is a little bit different than English, but sometimes it gets on the similar paths. So we're going to see that. Um, we're going to, I'm going to show you nine. I know I have eight here, but when, I, when we get to eight, then I'm going to raise some part and I'm going to teach you the ninth because the ninth is quite small. So I didn't, I didn't think I needed more space for that. So I'm going to teach you nine cases in which you're going to use the present tense correctly in Spanish. Now, I know I always tell you, oh, well, you know, the present tense is not so important. Maybe you want to focus more on the past tense or in the future tense, because when we talk, we tend to talk about past situations and future plans. But The present tense in Spanish can actually achieve a lot of those instances, the past and the future, as we will see. Let's start. See, for example, the sentence that I was taught when I was young and I was 13 and I was in secondary school and my biology teacher said, all living things, los seres vivos, all living things, all living beings. Things, I think, more than beings. Grow, no, are, no, all living things. Burn, I know it's incorrect in English because you have to burn. Grow, reproduce themselves, and die. So we're talking, I'm enunciating from the present tense, but I'm going to the past when they burn, when they are born. Nacen, grow, crecen, reproduce themselves, se reproducen, and die, y mueren. In all those instances, I'm using the present tense. And I selected this sentence because I want to show you that with the present tense, you can actually talk about the past, the present, and the future. So let's start with that. Los seres vivos nacen, crecen, se reproducen y mueren. And now, the first case in which we use the present, it's actually a really interesting one in Spanish. For example, the present when, where the, when the present represents what it's happening in the period of time when you're talking, right? Which is strange because while I'm, if you ask me, for example, what are you doing? I say, oh, I'm teaching. In Spanish, you could say, I teach, like I'm teaching. So it's happening right now, but I started teaching earlier and I'm going to finish teaching later. So uh, it's not so specific, right? It's the present, but you can say, yo enseño, like I teaching, or I'm reading, yo leo, or I walk, yo camino. Leo, camino, corro, run, cocino, cook, um, Barro, sweep, and all those present tense verbs, all those actions that are happening when you are enunciating the verb. But for this spe specific case, in Spanish, we use a slightly different form in practical real life situations. Most Spanish native speakers, la mayoría, most would say, I am reading, estoy leyendo, I am buying uh, something, I am cooking something. So you'll be saying the verb to be with estar. Why with estar? Because it's a temporary thing. I'm doing it right now. I won't be doing it later. I didn't do it earlier. So you're going to say estar, like yo estoy, tú estás, él, ella está, nosotros estamos, ustedes están. 
and then the gerundio, the gerund, which is to add this ending, ando, and this ending, yendo, depending on the verb. So, for example, the verbs that end with ar, caminar, cocinar, to cook, uh, cantar, to sing, mm, uh, let's say, um, almorzar, all those verbs that end with ar are going to, we have to drop out their ar and add ando. And the verbs that end with er or ir, correr, vivir, salir, comer, etc., are going to end with yendo. Adding that is as if you making I go, I am going. That's what you're doing. So you're not say, you say, um, camino, caminando. Oh, sorry. Se me cayó mi plumón, como siempre. I always drop my, I get too excited. Me emociona mucho enseñar. So you're going to drop the ending and you're going to add the gerundio. With this gerund, you are going to say what's happening right now. And native speakers use it more because for something that you are doing at the time when you're saying the sentence, it makes sense to be more specific. Right now, I am teaching, but you can say, I teach, enseño. Oh, what are you doing? Um, I buy some tortillas. Well, most speakers would say, I am buying tortillas. I am buying tortillas. For example, mi hermana me llama. Hey, Ana, ¿qué estás haciendo? Ah, estoy comprando tortillas. I am buying tortillas. Estoy comprando tortillas because that's the thing I'm doing at that moment. So this is the first case in which we're going to use the present. But to make it more specific, if you want to make it more specific, like it's doing, you're doing that right now, then you want to use this formula. Estar plus gerundio. That I already told you how to build it. Muy bien. El segundo caso es when you talk about, well, first of all, when you talk about things that you do, um, like habits, uh, like things that don't change, what you do. Uh, so, for example, when you say, I work at, for example, I work at the tortillería, that's where they sell tortillas. So I say, I work at the tortillería, but maybe you work at an office. So you can say, I work at an office. You're going to use the present tense, the present simple, indicativo tense. Yo trabajo, yo trabajo, el presente, trabajo en la tortillería. I put la, el, porque depende, en la oficina, pero yo por say that in the medical, in, in the doctor's office, you say consultorio. Consultorio ends with O, and most nouns that end with O are masculine. So you say, en el consultorio. Pero yo trabajo en la tortillería, o yo trabajo en la oficina, o yo trabajo en una escuela, etc. You're going to use presente, trabajo, tú trabajas en la oficina, yo trabajo en la tortillería. When there are things that are happy, like, daily that you do and also when there are things that are more general like universal things you know for example what i said all living things raw diet that's a universal general statement but if you want to say for example the earth goes around the sun well it's nothing that you're just making up it's a true so those when you're going to say a true, a truth, you're going to say, el, la tierra, el sol gira alrededor, de, ah, no, la tierra gira alrededor del sol. La tierra, aquí está la tierra, aquí está el sol y aquí está la tierra. Y está girando, chan, y tú dices, la tierra gira 
alrededor del sol. That's a universal truth. So you have to say it with the present. So your universal truth is you work at an office. Your universal truth is uh, you eat meat. Yo como carne. Or you don't eat meat. Yo no como carne. You're stating something general, universal. And the fact that the earth goes around the sun. And truths like that. Probably you know more truths than I do. The one that I came up, that I thought of when I was doing this lesson was that. Estaba pensando, oh, ¿qué ejemplo le voy a dar a mis alumnos? What example am I going to teach my students? And I said, oh, yeah, the sun and the earth and all that because that's a universal truth. Now, with this present Spanish tense, you can also say things that you do daily or that are habits that you have. Por ejemplo, yo, yo, I buy tortillas once a week. Yo compro tortillas una vez a la semana. I didn't write tortillas because I thought you could write it in your exercise. No, but because you can say yo compro eh, jugos uh, de frutas diario. Yo compro eh, postres en la tienda tal, like that store. You can do whatever, like... Whatever you buy, you can put it here because it's a habit you have. My habit is I buy tortillas once a week. Compro tortillas una vez a la semana. And the reason I didn't put yo is because, as you know, the verb already has the yo. It's implicit. Yo compro tortillas una vez a la semana. O compro tortillas una vez a la semana. When I say compro, you know it's yo. If I say Tú compras, I can say, compras tortillas una vez a la semana. Por ejemplo, mi hermana va al gimnasio tres veces a la semana. My sister goes to the gym three times a week. Ma, mi hermana va, goes to the gym, al gimnasio una, tres veces a la semana. Three times a week. Now, my other sister goes to the gym mm, once in a while. Mi otra hermana va al gimnasio de vez en cuando, once in a while. But to state those regular habits that you have, you have to use the present. I, I, I have uh, eggs for breakfast every day. That's a habit. So then you have to use the present. You don't have to say in the past or in the future. You can, just, you can only use the present. What I wrote here is a little bit of um, adverbs of time. Adverbs of time is when you're stating the time. When does that happen? Every day, once a month, uh, on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, every weekend, etc. So you think about this present tense um, as something that is used with a regular time frame. They call it adverbs of time because they like they locate you uh, in some in the timeline you do it regularly in certain spots very well this is the four el cuarto vamos al quinto this is quite similar and that that's what i uh, put it next <laughs> instead of saying every wednesday or on Wednesdays or um, twice a month, think about the future. You can express the future with the present. Oh, yes, see? ¿Sí? See? ¿Sí? Mira, por ejemplo, next week or next year or next month, I travel to Spain. Let's say, viajo a España. Viajo a España. You're saying, Next week, la siguiente, next week, la siguiente semana, viajo a España. I'm saying next week, it's the future. But I'm using the, the present verb. Viajo, viajo, it's in present. I'm not saying viajaré o voy a viajar. I'm saying yo viajo, tú viajas, 
el viaja, if you know the conjugation for the present tense, uh, perfect. If you don't know, then watch my video about that topic first. Viajo a España la, pro la siguiente semana. La siguiente could say la próxima too. You can also say próxima. It's the same thing. La siguiente o la próxima semana. El siguiente año. El siguiente año viajo a España o voy a España. O el siguiente año voy a Argentina. O el siguiente año voy a Perú. O el siguiente año voy a México. A donde quiera que vayas. O el siguiente año eh, me inscribo a la, a la escuela. I, um, subscribe, I subscribe to the school. I, um, I sign up to the school, etc. So yes, you can use the present to state plans that you're going to do in the future. And you don't have to use the, um, the future tense of the verb. Now, if you really want to use the future tense of a verb, remember that I told you a very easy way to express a future tense of the, uh, of the verb. So for example, you can say, you have to learn the present tense of the verb to go. The present, nothing else, just the present. Yo voy, tú vas, él va, this is an S. Es una S, eh? Él va, ella va, usted va, nosotros vamos, ustedes van, y ellos van, vamos y van. Uh, vice, whatever. I'm not going to teach you vice because most Spanish speakers don't use that. Vosotros. Voy. Tú vas a la preposición a and the verb in infinitive. Voy a viajar. Right? Voy a... Uy, qué fea letra. What an ugly writing. That's better. Voy a viajar. Vas a viajar. Vamos a viajar. Sí, el próximo año vamos a viajar a Perú. Sí, vamos todos. You can use, you can make the future like that for every verb. That's great. And on the way, you learn the present of to go, which is huge, huge. If you know the present of to go like a song, yo voy, tú vas, el, you already have it because a lot of people are like uh, 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 uh. so on the way to build the future you are going to memorize this which is muy importante muy importante now you say no 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 i want to use the present to state the future plans then you use the present of whatever infinitive verb remember infinitivo is the ones that end with ar er I are the three conjugations. Very well. So for, for example, the last example for this. My friend Gergana, who is in Berlin, she always tells me, Cuando vienes, when are you coming to visit me? To see me? Cuando vienes a verme? And she's using a present tense, even though it's a time, like it's not present, what I'm gonna do will be the future. She's stating it in the present tense, and that's a regular way to say it. She said, when are you coming? Cuando vienes? You can ask. When you ask someone, you can say, cuando vienes? A que hora comes? At what time do you eat? Um, a que hora te veo? At what time do I see you? So, for example, you're going to ask me, cuando vienes? Uh, and I say, voy a verte. O voy a visitarte, te, because it's a gergana, my friend. Voy a visitarte, voy a verte. I say it in the present, the main verb, it's in present. Voy a verte, voy a visitarte. The others are in infinitive with the person who I'm talking to. But very important, the question, when are you coming? You remember I told you that you can say, Estoy leyendo, it's like I'm reading. But when you say, when are you coming? That way in English, 
is incorrect in Spanish. You cannot say, ¿Cuándo estás viniendo? When are you coming? ¿Cuándo estás viniendo? We ask, when do you come? Or when you come? ¿Cuándo vienes? As I said in another video, my friend Ruben, who is a musician, he always asks, what are you doing tomorrow? Which would be, ¿Qué estás haciendo mañana? Like the gerund, ¿Qué estás? El verbo estar. Haciendo, what are you doing tomorrow? Rubén should ask, ¿Qué haces mañana in present? ¿Qué haces? ¿O qué vas a hacer? Because it's the future. ¿O qué vas a hacer? But he cannot ask, what are you doing tomorrow? ¿Qué estás haciendo mañana? This gerund can all only be used for things that are currently happening. You're doing it. The person who speaks is doing that action. When you are using it for a future, you have to use only the present. ¿Qué, vas a, qué haces mañana? O the future. ¿Qué vas a hacer mañana? It's common that when you ask a question, you ask in present. ¿Cuándo vienes? ¿A qué hora sales? At what time do you come out? At what time do you finish? ¿A qué hora terminas? At what time do you finish? ¿A qué hora vas al pan? At what time do you go and buy the bread? That's a good saying in Spanish. ¿A qué hora sales al pan? That's what guys ask women to say, like, oh, I'll, I'll go and run into you then. <laughs> kind of flirty. Uh, ¿A qué hora sales al pan? You say, oh, a las seis. And then uh, at six, then you, you run into this person. It's romantic, that's it. Very well. So, ¿cuándo vienes? Oh, you can ask, ¿a what time do you take a shower? ¿A qué hora te bañas? ¿A what time do you take a shower? ¿A qué hora te bañas? And you're using the present. Now, you think about it, it's very similar to this part, right? It's just a habit. It happens. ¿Qué hora te bañas? But if you have a normal question, ¿a qué hora vienes? ¿A qué hora sales? You're kind of using the present, but you're not, you're using the present, but obviously you, you are using it to know the future action. Now, let's go to the seventh, la siete. La siete is when you, it's a condition. I call it like, we call it the condition present, right? Because you always express a condition. Something is going to happen if, if. The big word is if. And if in Spanish is si. But no si with an accent mark. Si. Si with accent mark, like this here. Si is yes, but without an accent mark. As if, right? For example, if you want to give a condition to your friend, si quieres uh, darle una condición a tu amigo o a tu vecino o a quien sea, to whoever, you can say, if you go, I go. If you don't go, I don't go then. So you're saying, si vas, voy, coma. Puedes decir, si tú vas, yo voy. Because the verb is all, the person is always embedded in the verb ending. Then you don't have to say it. But if you prefer to say it, then you just say it. Si vas, voy. If you go, I go. Uh, for example, I always tell my friend Rita. Rita doesn't like to cook. So whenever I tell her, if you come, I cook. It's like a, like a condition that is good for her. Say, well, come, I'll cook, don't worry. Say, si vienes, presente. Si tú vienes, o si vienes, yo cocino. Si vienes, cocino. Si no vienes, if you don't come and then we see each other somewhere else, then I won't cook. So it's when you're giving conditions to people. If you say, if, if you come, I cook. If you come, uh, we go to the pool, etc. That's um, the condition present, right? You express a condition, you use the present. And it's quite 
practical because think about it. Sometimes you get a headache with Spanish verbs and you're like, oh, it's so difficult. But here I'm teaching you a formula. It's like if present of the verb, present indicativo simple, comma, I, ta, ta, ta. And presente de nuevo. Again, so it's quite handy. It's very useful. And I think you'll rather uh, use it. You learn it well. Uh, the eighth, the second last one. Churchill dies in 1965. Yes, that's the historical present. It's when we take a past uh, event, event and we bring it to the present with the verb. For example, I say Churchill muere. But really, what I'm saying is murió, died. Murió. Churchill murió. But I'm saying muere. Yes, we find this present very often in biographies, like at the end of the book, uh, where they try to bring the past event to the tense. I think that is because psychologically, you are getting closer to that event. So it makes sense. Like you are kind of witnessing the event. It gets more familiar. It doesn't it's not past anymore, something like that. But maybe I'm becoming too philosophical. You know, sometimes I take the mountain and become philosophical. So yes, the historical present is when they, in the books, in biographies, they use a present verb instead of um, past. For example, when they say, Cristobal Colón descubre América, like discovers. You, you tend to say, to, to read it in present, but it's discovered. Nobody is doubting that. It's not a present thing. It's just, I guess the writer is trying to approach the reader to that event. Now, another biography used um, uh, from this uh, present is when you give a resume in Spanish, you talk about you in third person, <laughs> like, oh, I'm really, really important. And then sometimes you use the present tense, you know? Artists tend to do it a lot. I wonder why. <laughs> um, you say, uh, fulanito de tal, fulanito, you know what fulanito de tal is? Have I told you? Fulanito, fulanito, or sutanito, right? In Spanish, sutanito. <laughs> in the regular, in the popular culture, are the names of nobody that you want to give an example of nobody like ah fulanito said this like fulanito is nobody it's just the name of nobody and sutanito too so when you have fulanito y sutanito is it's very useful when i teach spanish my students already know fulanito and sutanito we can give it a face anyway what i was saying is artists in their resumes tend to use that historical <laughs> present a lot Mucho. Why? I don't know. Maybe because it, it gives some weight to the presence, the importance. So for example, if I were an artist, or if I were like in my resume, I'll say, Ana nace en Mexico en 1900. Ah, ta, 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 ta. Crece, eh, estudia, studies en 1987 in the school, la, la, la. She graduates and then she starts and everything is in present, right? Like everything is in present. And yeah, it is to make it, I think, more interesting that put it in the past. It brings it closer, right? If you were going to hire me, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, she has done so many things not so long ago. And it turns out that at the end it says in 1951, right? But it doesn't matter, it gets you closer. And speaking of get you closer, I have another example for, uh, yeah, that, that, I almost forgot. <laughs> I almost forget. Oh, that's another example, but we're gonna go to that one next. Oh, I'm so excited. There are so many good things that I left for the end. When I say getting closer to the past, have you ever heard people sometimes they tell you a story that happened and then use the present? Oh, and then, and then she opens the door. Ella abre la puerta and looks at me. Y se me queda viendo. What's happening? He says. ¿Qué, qué pasa? 
me dice. Y yo me quedo. And I stayed like, uh, nothing, nada. Like, why are you doing that face? ¿Por qué tienes esa cara? Why do you have that face? I'm like, well, that is my face. And then, and then he leaves. Y se va. Y yo me quedo. And I stay. Why? ¿Qué? Why do people say this? I love this part. And I always use it when I tell my stories. It makes it more interesting. It makes it as if you were there. Like, y abre la puerta. Se me queda viendo. Y yo me quedo. ¿Qué haces aquí? ¿No estás trabajando? No. Vine a verte. And you get closer to the story. You're an spectator. It's actually... Like, like, I'm telling you the story, but you become the spectator. And by me saying the past story in present, I get you in like the suspense and, and all this drama that is happening, even though it happened. So it makes sense that the historical present gets us closer to the past, past event. That in resume, sometimes we speak in present, so to make our ex like the, the employment experience closer, etc. It makes sense. It makes sense. The last one, do you remember if I say, oh, before I forget, I try, I almost forget. I said, I almost forget. I almost forget. Almost forget, forget. I almost forget. Casi, golden word, casi. Now, Forget because I forget. I didn't forget Frodo. No, I forget to myself. Se, yeah, the one that makes it reflexive. Se me olvida. Present. I say I forgot. Casi se me olvidó. Doesn't make sense because it's present. I didn't forget, but I almost. Yes, when you say, oh, for example, I almost fall. Casi. Here I put se me because olvidar se is like um, you're saying I forget myself. I forget. <laughs> you can watch my video about reflexive verbs or reciprocal verbs. Casi me caigo. Caerse. Casi me caigo. I almost fall. Casi me caigo. I almost fall. Caerse tú ends with S-E. So we make it uh, reflexive. Casi, oh, I always say this. I almost forget my keys because I always forget the keys. Because my house doesn't lock, like when, it, when I close the door, it locks. So to close it, I don't need the keys. So I forget my keys all the time. And I always give this example. So you probably, oh, Anna, you don't have any more examples. Please give us a break. Casi olvido las llaves. Las llaves. Tata, las llaves. You know how to write llaves. Casi olvido las llaves. I almost. So when you say I almost, after. You can say the verb in present. Now remember, if the verb ends with SE or if it's an action that you're doing and it's happening to you, like kind of goes back to you, a reflexive verb, then you have to say me caigo, casi me baño, I almost take a shower, oh, I shouldn't have taken a shower, I almost take a shower, etc. Casi, I almost, and then the verb in present. If it's a reflexive verb, then with the reflexive pronoun. If not, then just the simple verb in present. Muy bien. I think that's all I wanted to teach you today. It's around, <laughs> see, I cut it. Ah. Um, eight or nine or 10 uses of the present tense in Spanish. And this is useful because with this present, you can express yourself in really many tenses, in many uh, temporal scenes. Muy bien. I hope you enjoyed my lesson. I will see you in my next lesson, probably next week. Don't forget to go to my website to sign up to get my newsletter. I send my newsletter once a month, sometimes 
once every two months, depending on how busy I am with other things. But what I try to do in my newsletter is to teach you more Spanish, but in a different way, maybe to explore uh, cultural parts of the language, the culture, to ex uh, explain to you some things that are really difficult maybe to do in a video because they are very long. So I can explain to you in detail some topics related to Spanish. So yeah, it is a newsletter, but it's not like about me. It's more about what I have that I think can help you to keep improving or keep learning Spanish. Muchas gracias y hasta luego.